Ladies and gentlemen, what we've got going on here this time is a very unique head. Now, according to the casting numbers, this beast be the 1960 closed chamber Ford FE head that went on the 390 high performance which uh, this is a very sought after head for the guys that are 427. Now I've already done part one of this video but I've never posted it yet and what it was this head had all kinds of porosity holes in the combustion chambers and the side of the head was junk. I showed how I used my cast iron welding technology filled up all the holes that had it surfaced and as you can see here you cannot even tell where the welding occurred it just does that amazing of a dab blame job so uh, now we got to get back to square one which is going to be scribing it to the felpro head gasket 1020 right here i've already set it up got the dowel pins in it getting ready to scribe the lines i'm going to go ahead anchor everything down and and, and uh, get the scribing done and I've already started cutting on the combustion chambers quite a while back. I'm going to alter the shape quite a bit. Let's zoom in here. You can see the trenches where I've already started cutting. I did glass bead the head since then because of the heat. You know, it turns them to rust. It squeezes the excess water out. But I'm going to go in here and spend quite a bit of time reshaping them. So this was a pair of heads that was headed for the junkyard or the scrap pile. I welded them up, fixed the surfaces, got them corrected where you cannot even see the nickel weld hardly where I took care of it. Brought them back to life and turning them into a set of monsters with a set of SI valves 215 diameter on the intake. This is going back on a 390 engine that has about 11 to 1 compression and to top it off we got two intake manifolds that is going to be used. One of them is a super old Elderbrock uh, side ram and then a current uh, blower manifold that will let us put an 871 blower on it. And we're going to be watching that there. I, I really enjoy this. I don't get many of the old nostalgic heads to port anymore so y'all are going to see something that uh, probably ain't never been seen before that I'm aware of some really close up intricate shots and workings of a really famous casting cylinder head more on that later but uh, anyway there's our back to our starting point and here we okay as we left off Sorry about that, I had to turn my fan off. As we left off, as you remember, I got the, the combustion chambers ready. Now these grooves right here that you're seeing are partially machinist ridges, but I've already went in there with a bigger cutter and started grinding on them. And what I gotta do is go in here with this ball and layer it in, then switch to a smaller ball, come in here on the quarters, expand out, and lay this chamber back. This is what's required with this head and uh, to put these gigantic valves. It had like 202s in it and 1600s and I'm going to a 215-165. These are some head valves that I cut but anyway I'm going to show you how I'm cutting them and how I trim them. And as we see you got to do it so lightly. I've showed you my other stuff. I'm just going to knock on that edge. A good head cutter has one thing that he lives off of, boys. No ruffles, no ridges. That is so true in everything. Especially in this combustion chamber area because if you have resets and ridges up in here when that valve starts to live off the seat, you're already setting into motion a big storm like a tornado of eddy currents. Now the big ball, which is what I'm using here, I'll use it to knock the ridge. Then 
I'm going to come back here, like I said, with the small one and get a little bit closer on the inside and then I'll start reshaping. I'm going to pull this back side and open it up and lay it in right there. This is not to induce swirl. I want to get this swirl stain straight. I know that there is swirl, that it exists, but that was a theory that I believe has went kaplunk over the years. The tumbling air seems to be the dominant one that, we're, that in our world that we're using, unless we're in fuel economy, then it's another story. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish laying this in and go around these edges and try to get all the ridges and start blending it as I go along, as I usually do. I'm going to keep you informed. Notice how, and remember, I use the... Uh, the larger ball in this area then I remove the valve and I come in here and touch and I mean man have you got to be careful right here this is critical I pulled it down to where you see a little thin line of the factory cast that's going to be your template so as you're coming across right here and pulling this in this is the image that you want and if you look and all of the pores all have that same look. See, I'm trying to focus in here and here. They got that little bitty bit of a line. Like I said, you can't have the valve in the head. There's only so much that's going to let you do. At the same time, if you go in here digging, you're fixing to tear your seats up. Right now at this point, I've got 10 and a half hours on the combustion chambers, and i probably got 10 to 12 more to go. Double that amount, because see, I have to go in here, if you look at the exhaust valve side, look at this mess of uh, several of the Ford heads that I've done, and even Chevrolets, I'm not pointing the finger at Ford, but this is one of the worst I've ever seen, and I'm you know, if I had another one of these heads, I could tell you if this was a machinist ridge. I'm beginning to think that it isn't. Uh, I'm going to get the factory book and look on this 1960 head and find a stem height, and that's going to tell me how close I am to being right. I think that from the factory that these heads just had this big, deep ridge. When you run across this, you have to lower the entire chamber floor. You got to pull it down. So if that 30 degree angle's kicking up and it ain't in the way. Now, where will you see this? How about on at least 60% of the aftermarket heads look this horrible right out of the box? And some of them will take a surty machine with a radius cutter and try to clip it to unshroud it. But then you got this big bulk of material right after the surty cutter unshrouds. So CNC chambers, yeah, they're great if they've done it right, which they're, I'm not knocking that machine. It's a hell of a machine. But usually you're hand grinding and pulling this down. Nothing's going to beat it if you're using the right eggs like right here now. I'll go in here with the smaller one and try to lightly make that line disappear. I'll do the same thing, but I just wanted to show you that. Uh, I'll finish this with the valve out of the head. Now let's go over here and look at one I ain't done this to yet so you can see the difference. Look at here what we got here. This is one that I'm getting ready to do, and notice how it's all that seat material right there. I mean, you can just feel it's about 150 thousandths rise. Now I'm going to go in here and pull that on the sharpest edge and then it's going to have that little bitty thin line and a little bit of shiny where it's dancing. That's what tells you when to stop. Okay, so I just wanted to show you one. This is with the valve in it and now I pull the valve out and I got to go in there and do it like this and then go to the little one. We'll work step by step through because this is a very big problem area on this head, but in the same lick. Think of when they made this head, 1960, and it's within an eyelash of having current technology. Look, your swoop, your kidney beam, you're unshrouded up here on the quench area. It's other than having to go in here and lower the chamber floor and pull that in, I'm going to have almost a current technology shape in a cylinder head that was made the same year I was born. And that, to me, I'm sorry, is just flat amazing. Chevrolet's got its things and Ford had its things too, but there's no way they could have known this at that time. That burn, relationship of the spark plug, the quench and all that, they just could not have known that back then. I'm 
One thing I'm good on, y'all, if you ever want to know anything, is historical achievements and designs of the cylinder head through the years. I've studied them very carefully. And while I think they were in the right direction, I can uh, assure you that for the most part, this was a shot in the dark. All right, so anyway, just thought I'd let you know where that is.